Hello ladies and gents and welcome to this tutorial on using an equaliser in Adobe Audition to reduce the impact of noise in a recording. It's particularly useful for dialogue once you've recorded on location and uh, any other sound where you picked up some background noise that you want to reduce. There are processes in Audition which do this for you and I'm going to show that in a separate tutorial. This is the conventional way of doing it using EQ and also give you insight into how some of the noise reduction processes actually work in Adobe. What we have here is a recording by my students from a few years ago. Everything about this recording is wrong. It's not particularly well acted, it's not particularly well pronounced, they picked a really bad place to record this on location with lots of noise. But what has resulted in is an example, quite an extreme example that I can use to show you some of these processes that if you take these processes applied to something a little less extreme, you should get some quite good results. This is never going to be noise free. So let's let's see what we've got first of all. All right. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and he got the others. Good. Right, so various issues we've got with this. It's not pronounced very well. The levels are fairly good. I think this is what would be normalized because it peaks at minus six, but you can hear a lot of background noise. So let's take, first of all, this section here and listen to what we have. I don't really hear it. It's like, it's like a note. There's other noise in there as well, like a breath and, and general of the background, but there's a note in there. That's actually a generator of some sort. They decided to record near a generator. Mistake, find another location. Unless you need that generator and that's part, and that's part of your scene and therefore you need the noise of it, you don't want to be recording dialogue for your post-apocalyptic movie or whatever's going on here near a generator. It kind of spoils it. Uh, but I will be looking at how to reduce the impact of that as part of the tutorial. Uh, the other thing we've got here, which is very commonplace with any dialogue or sound you're recording outdoors, and that's this bit here. That, well, that's wind rumble. Probably used to that just using your phone out in the wind. But wind rumble isn't a natural sound. There is no situation where you want that. Wind does not sound like wind rumble. The reason why it sounds like that on your recordings is because what's happening is that the wind is moving the diaphragm on the mic and that's resulting in this kind of rumble. When I say it's rumble, that noise does actually go across the entire frequency range, but it's most significant frequencies are down at the bottom end. It's quite handy because it doesn't conflict so much with the dialogue. So what am I going to do about this recording then using EQ? Well, first of all, it's choosing the right equaliser. You've got several options in Adobe Audition. The graphic equalisers give you bands, but of course these band widths are, you can't control which frequencies within them are going to be affected and which aren't. Obviously the more bands you have then the more pinpointed your maneuvers are going to be but these are easy EQ units to use because it's simply lowering or raising the level of various bands of EQ throughout the spectrum so some of you might be going what is he talking about I'm using jargon here indiscriminately so let's explain a bit more and I'm going to explain it with the parametric equalizer which is a bit clearer on what's going on so EQ is tone controls. We've all used them before. If you've been in the car and you've turned the bass up to get that you know, drum and bass, <laughs> yeah, you've done you've done some EQing. All right. So we use it on our TV to reduce the impact of bass, so we don't disturb people sleeping upstairs. So we've all at some point in our lives done some EQing on consumer goods, if not uh, within production. So EQing is about changing the levels of bass, middle, and treble frequencies within a sound. And what you see before you now is a parametric equaliser. It's got a graphic section here which shows you the shape of EQ. So here's your bottom end frequencies, going through to your high end frequencies. It covers the full spectrum of human hearing. Not that I can hear all that spectrum anymore. None of us can actually, but when we're born, we can initially hear 20 hertz to 20,000. Fortunately, that naturally gets damaged as you get older. Uh, in my case, unnaturally so I'm actually missing quite a few frequencies but never mind so we've got the graphic representation here so you can see the shape of your EQ and down here we've got the controls to actually adjust them all and one informs the other so if you grab something and move it around you know you see all the numbers moving in the section below I'm going to go through what some of these mean so each of these nodes here is a bandwidth you've got low and high which are low cutoff and high cutoff sometimes you hear them referred to as high pass filter and low pass filter which is kind of the opposite way around so if you reduce the low you reduce the low end frequency allowing the high frequencies to pass through and vice versa 
All right, so those are called low pass and high pass filters. The rest of these are what's called parametric EQ nodes, which you can either boost or attenuate, as they call it, reduce the level of. And you can move these anywhere along the frequency spectrum. You've also got uh, down here something called the Q or the width. Q stands for quality, a very precise EQ maneuver, I suppose, is a high quality one to something like this, which is dragging a lot of other frequencies up with it, a little bit like a band. If I can grab it, you'll see it gets tighter and tighter. All right. And reduce the quality, picks up everything. So that's what Q stands for. So here we've got the Hertz. So we know the actual frequency band that we are affecting. And here we've got the gain, how much we're boosting by or cutting by. So the two work together. All right, so you can move the nodes around or you can be precise and set digits and numbers based on your knowledge below. So we've identified in this bit of loops here that we have some wind rumble. I'm going to deal with that first. So wind rumble, as I say, you'll never get rid of that entirely because it covers the entire frequency spectrum. When you press play, you can see what I'm up against. Can you see all oh, that blue? There, that is what's called a spectrum analyzer. It's showing you what frequencies are being used. It is giving me some useful information because it is showing that at the moment, the base frequencies are more prominent than the high frequencies. So the higher up this graph we go, the louder the frequencies are, below the level, the lower the frequencies are. So we can see at the moment that this sound is right across the entire spectrum. So if I would reduce it all, we'll be left with nothing. That won't help the dialogue very much. But we can see there's quite a prominent bass here and sub bass. We don't need that on dialogue. There'll come a point around about the 300, 400 hertz maybe, or maybe a bit less, where there'll be some fundamental frequencies and they will be affected if you go too high. They might need a little bit of compromise in this instance and I'll come to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the low high pass filter, so the low cut, and I cut it. I'm going to make sure I've got the tightest cut because I've got like some Q options here as well. Just two of them on how tight the filter is. All right, and I'm gonna take that up to, well, it's gonna to start to cut off around about 80 to everything below about 70 or 80 is completely cut off. And then there's a curve as to how much is gonna be cut off and see how much that's reduced the wind. So with the cut, without, already quite a bit being taken out. If I go higher up, you really do reduce the impact. There's only just the mid and the highs left on that wind rumble, barely there at all. I can take the rest out with the gate actually, um, but I do have a little problem here. And that is, if I get rid of this loop. The dog found us and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. The voice is now quite thin. I'll take the EQ off. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us. And it There's that richness to the dialogue that I'm missing. So I'm going to look at the spectrum analyzer again, just whilst it's switched off and see if I can work out where the fundamental frequencies for the dialogue are. So I'm going to watch very carefully around this, uh, this area here. Okay. We got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog right. This is quite a good one. This point, this point, this point, and this point are all important frequencies in the dialogue. So if I take this back down just below there, we'll reduce the impact of the wind somewhat, but re retain some of the base of the dialogue. Dog found us and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and he got the, uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Let's make a new loop. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I need to compromise because that wind is too prominent, uh, even though it's better for the dialogue. So I'm going to go somewhere in between. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I can use these other uh, points in the middle to of nowhere. raise other aspects up. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. 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 
looks a little better. So the wind has been reduced, it's still there. Uh, but it's been reduced significantly enough now for a gate to work on that bit so i don't have too much of a problem with that anymore but i have reduced the bassiness of the dialogue and i feel in this instance it works it's recorded outdoors for a start so outdoors dialogue tends to dissipate dialogue sounds thinner try it yourself try speaking inside a closed room and then go and speak outside your voice will sound completely different so the fact that it's slightly thinner outdoors is not affecting this production in my opinion so that's the, the wind rumble dealt with sufficiently to be able to apply a gate, which I'll look at in another tutorial. Uh, let's have a look now at this generator tone, see if we can do anything with this without damaging the dialogue too much. So I'm going to highlight the bit where it's more or less just the tone. I'm going to look at the spectrum analyzer and you can see, I think it's that bit around there, around about 300 mark. So I'm using 0.1 already so I'm going to bring number two over and I'm going to try this first of all I'm going to get fairly tight with number two so there's the number two point and I'm going to increase the quality quite high then what I'm going to do I'm going to boost it all right I'll just move this around till I find that note it was pretty much where I put it you can hear that's that note is now resounding through you then do the opposite there we go, note gone. But how much has it affected the rest of the dialogue? Let's see. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us. It's fine. Okay, let's do a bit without and got the others. Prove it. Good. So there's the I don't original. think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and he got the others. A with EQ? I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and he got the others. Right, okay, so it's improved. I've reduced the impact of noise. It's far from noise free. And there are other processes in Audition that will probably do this better by analysing it and sort of working it out digitally. But um, what I've done here is I've reduced the impact enough that a gate added to this might just work sufficiently to make this dialogue usable. We'll see in the next tutorial. I've not tried it yet. But one more thing to add, this equalizer is working in an offline process mode. Unlike some softwares or some situations where equalizer works in online mode. So the difference between the two is that here, you have to apply the process and the waveform actually changes. So you can see the results of your labor and you hear the results of your labor. The downside to this is that if it's wrong, you have to go and undo it and reapply it. Now an online version, which you would use in say Premiere, or After Effects or something, you would run in tandem, potentially through the mixing desk. There, you'll be able to actually go and keep tweaking and keep tweaking your equalizer to get the sound you want. And the original waveform actually stays in its original format. There's other software out there which does that a lot better than Adobe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually apply the EQ and you should see, and I've got a slight off to the side here, but you should see this waveform changing and the impact of the noise lessen. There we are. Okay, obviously the actual voice has been affected as well, so it will go down. It's no longer picking at minus six, but that can be all made up for another processing. Right, so that's how to use the EQ to reduce the impact of noise. Watch further videos on gating and other processes, and hopefully it'll help you towards noise-free dialogue. Thanks for watching.